we are about to enter the climax of the Easter season. Yung tinatawag kong kambal da piesta, the twin feasts of the Ascension and Pentecost. Ascension, which is about the departure of the risen Christ. It is usually celebrated on the 40th day of Easter. And Pentecost, which is the coming of the Holy Spirit, celebrated on the 50th day after Easter, or 10 days after Ascension. Well, the 40th day of Easter usually falls on a Thursday, the Thursday of the sixth week of Easter. But in the Philippines, the Catholic Bishops' Conference of the Philippines, instead of celebrating it on a weekday, has fixed it on a Sunday. And that's the sixth Sunday of Easter. Itong darating na linggo will be the Ascension. Ginawa nating linggo so that more people can join in the celebration. It is followed by Pentecost on the seventh Sunday of Easter, the descent of the Holy Spirit. Sa ating Ibanghelyo ngayon, Jesus is explaining to His disciples kung bakit siya kailangang umalis. He says, He has to go so that He can send us the gift of the Holy Spirit who will empower us to share in His resurrected life and to participate in His mission through our incorporation into His body, the church, which is what baptism is all about. We become part of Christ, part of the body of Christ. In today's Gospel, Jesus is describing the role of the Holy Spirit as that of an advocate. Chinyek ko sa dictionary ang definition ng advocate. And it says something like this. Advocate, one who supports or defends or pleads somebody else's cause or argues in that person's favor. The Spanish word for advocate will make it more evident to the Pinoy kung ano ang ibig sabihin. The Spanish for advocate is abogado. Yes, the Holy Spirit is supposed to work very much like an abogado. The lawyer who defends his client in the heavenly court. To be able to understand the role of the Spirit as an abogado, an advocate, we have to understand the opposite role ni Satanas as an accuser and the role of the Son of God who ascends into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father as one who will judge the living and the dead. So, meron kang abogado, meron kang accuser, at merong judge. Well, Jewish tradition has it that Satan is a fallen angel. At ang kasalanan niya ay pride, the sin of pride. Apparently, after God created human beings in His image and likeness, he commanded thou the angels to bow before the human being because of the dignity that God had bestowed on humankind. Kaya lang, among the angels, merong pasaway. There was supposedly a rebel. He considered bowing to the human beings as something below his dignity. 
Bakit ako yuyuko sa kanya? E mas nauna ako na-create. Angel ako. Tao lang yan. And so, he got banished from heaven for the sin of pride. Kayabangan. But Satan, we are told, would not take his humiliation lightly. From then on, kinarir daw ni Satanas ang maging batong katitisuran, a stumbling block for human beings. If only to prove his point to God. Satan has made it his mission to question the dignity and the supposed goodness of human beings and to expose it as nothing but hypocrisy. Kung tatagalugin natin ang paboritong linya, the line of accusation of Satan against human beings is this. Ang taong yan, nagbabanal-banalan, pero kunwari lang yan. Nagmamagaling, pero hipokrito naman yan. Kunwari, makadiyos, pero katulad ko lang na demonyo yan. Para kay Satanas, walang totoo, walang mabuti at walang banal na tao. But actually, he's just projecting himself. His real objective is to make us behave like him. He has assumed the role of the so-called accuser before God, meaning he has made it his objective to discredit us, to discredit us before God. You might want to read the book of Job. You remember that man whom Satan accused before God as being faithful only because he was being rewarded. At ang challenge niya, Nako, alisin mo ang kayamanan niyan. Tignan natin kung di ka mumurahin niyan. In the book of Revelation, the apostle speaks of a vision of a battle, a heavenly battle of angels and the defeat of Satan by the blood of the Lamb. Here is what is written, Revelation 12, verse 10. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Messiah. For the accuser of our brothers and sisters, who accuses them before our God day and night, has been hurled down. Binagsak na siya. In the gospel, Jesus is also speaking about the coming defeat of the accuser and the vindication of the accused. Sino yon? Tayo yon. He assures us that we have no reason to be afraid of final judgment because we have an advocate, a defender in the heavenly court who will justify us. The one who stands to be convicted Ang makukonvict, hindi tayo, kundi yung accuser. The accuser who has put the world under his spell. And you know, this should make you understand where the confidence of St. Paul is coming from. You remember that line in Romans 8 where he says, Who will bring charges against God's chosen ones? It is God who acquits us. Alam ko, maraming takot, maraming taong takot sa final judgment. 
Because obviously, alam naman natin ang sarili natin, may mga kahinaan tayo. But I have good news for you. Chill out. Cool ka lang. May abogado tayo. We have a good lawyer, the Holy Spirit. He will make sure that the real, the real enemy, the real adversary is going to be convicted. And that is our accuser. And the good news of Jesus is simple. Take courage. I have overcome the world. In the name of Jesus, we will finally overcome the evil one who has put the world under his spell.